I'm, I'm a member of parliament for Politics Can Be Different until the 1st of February uh, because I decided to step down and uh, give back my mandate to the party. Can you explain to me a bit more about why you decided to step down? Yes, so it's been a difficult um, process to decide, but um, and it was a personal personal decision. Um, my main reason for that doing that was a response to the situation, political situation that um, evolved over the last one and a half years um, as a result of the government's uh, attitude towards democracy. I felt that uh, with the new constitution coming into place um, and changing the rules of the House in the last minute uh, at the end of last year, um, the government basically demonstrated that they don't want to want to um, keep even the minimum of democratic rules. So how does this change your position in terms of being able to participate in the government? What role are you managing to find? I think it's fair to say, um, even as an opposition MP, that um, the real opposition movement against um, the, uh, the current government started on the streets of, of, um, of Budapest and not inside parliament. We've been trying to convince uh, the government inside parliament and voting against um, unjust um, and undemocratic laws, but at the same time, more and more um, NGOs, civil society organizations uh, and trade unions joined forces and uh, months after months um, more and more people gathered on demonstrations. And on the 2nd of January, we got to the stage where we had 100,000 people demonstrating in front of the Opera House at the inauguration of the new constitution. And this movement, this lively uh, movement, has evolved um, over the last one and a half years. So my um, basically, when I said I don't want to be uh, an MP anymore and I would like to return my mandate to my party, I also said that I want, I'm going to continue my work to organize civil society and organize ordinary people outside of parliament. Many people, more and more people, talk about the current developments as our second chance to co to finish um, the regime change. And it's in that sense that um, now we have to make sure that uh, everybody understands uh, what we mean by democratic rights, uh, what we mean by human rights, uh, why why are these important for us, why, are, why is freedom important for us, and we need not only to win over Orban and his government, but we also need to do this in a way that people understand that we have to fight for the republic, and it, there is a difference between living in a democracy and living in a in a communist um, one-party system. I'd like to have a, an idea about how people in Hungary are seeing the revolution or the the, the, the new resistance through your own media. It's very inaccurate, um, I have to say. Unfortunately, we have very little access to television channels, and even when we have um, access to it, then it is mostly used to try and um, explain and try and justify the stories of um, of the government. We very rarely have a chance to actually tell our own story. I experienced it myself when I announced my um, resignation, um, and that was used by left-wing and right-wing political um, media uh, to explain in their own ways and uh, to justify what they what they what they tried the, the picture what they try to paint about LNP about green politics. I, I give you a very clear example. On the second of January, we had, as I said, uh, over a hundred thousand people on the streets of Budapest to protest against um, the government and the new constitution. Uh, the national television channel had carefully chosen a spot where you couldn't see hardly anybody behind the reporter to demonstrate that there is no one on the street. And we, we and on, on, on Facebook, there has been quite a lot of things going around showing the same news report uh, from an independent uh, television, commercial television channel and the national television channel. And they were, the reporters were both reporting about the same event. And, and, and with one, you'd seen a lot of people screaming and, and you could see feel that you're in a, in a lively demonstration. And with the national television broadcast, you could see a guy with, with, with uh, two others. And it was the same event. So this is the level of uh, distortion you find in, in, in the media. Do you feel the European the Union has, has, has taken on their role responsibly in terms of how they've reacted to the situation in Hungary? 
I'm quite ambiguous about that, I have to say, because ambiguous, because because I think the Greens have realized early on that there are things happening which uh, which 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 are very um, detrimental to the rule of law and democracy. But I think official Europe, as in you know prime ministers and um, and um, and the Commission itself had woken up quite late. And when Orban, uh, Prime Minister, says that it is all about the money, to some extent I have to ex- agree with him. I think uh, official Europe woke up when uh, Orban had started to clamp down on, on uh, financial interest and not when uh, the democracy, Hungarian democracy, was um, infringed upon. So... I think Europe has a lot, a lot of responsibility in getting to this stage. The way the Greens had criticized Orban early on about the media law, I think this should have been a, a very good example for official Europe as well, because these are common values, and we cannot let uh, people like Orban or Berlusconi to uh, trample on them. So whilst I'm happy for the solidarity and the support that's been built up in the last months or so, I also feel that um, if it was really about the values, uh, the democracy, democratic values and ha- human rights, then they probably would have followed um, the European Greens example and and start to act when uh, when uh, Cohn Bandit said that. Thank you for your uh, time today. Well, thank, thanks very much for for the opportunity.